How's it going? It is done. It is giant. Take a look at how I built this beautiful table. Check it out. Just like I start every single table, I start by measuring really carefully. Uh, this one was crazy because it's going to be 14 feet long and cut into two pieces and assembled on site. So I need to be extremely careful with the measurements, the organization of it, all of the pieces of this. So I did a lot of measurements. It took a long time to cut it. I used my Festool track saw and the track connectors to make a like a 15 foot long track here. Cutting it across the center, this was the most pivotal cut on the whole thing. And gotta get all the little inclusions cleaned out. I used the hammer, the claw hammer, just to kind of knock out some of that bark and rotted areas using a wire wheel on the grinder, which is an extremely messy situation. Gotta clean up a lot. Then I you pull out the restore. This thing is great with a wire wheel. Cleans up the bark areas super fast. Does a great job and I'm even able to hook the dust collector up to it. Now I use this silicone spray just to make sure that the HDPV doesn't wear, wear out by the amount of times I pour on it. Setting up the slabs on the first floor, on those blocks there to be able to easily clamp down the slabs so that they don't float when I pour the epoxy. Gonna clamp them down nice and tight and smooth. Um, that also keeps them straight if there's any type of bow or warping in the boards. Damming up the edges, caulking the seams uh, to make sure it doesn't leak out. Now we start the epoxy pour process. I actually poured this in two sections again like I said. So I had to measure the pigment perfectly for the amount of epoxy I ended up using. Uh, because I had to mix it twice and that river has to be consistent amongst the two pieces. Again, using the vacuum chambers here um, to suck out all the oxygen for those uh, in that epoxy to make sure there's no bubbles in the tables themselves. Uh, relieving the pressure on that, pulling them out and pouring away. Now I only recorded the pouring in the first half because the second half was very much the same thing. Uh, but this is me pouring the four first half, getting in all those inclusions, which made this table absolutely gorgeous. Now I am ready to declamp and pull it off of the pour table. A little bit of pry bars to get it loose. Got to move it, lifting this heavy, heavy panel, getting it on my work table here to get it out of the way and get it opened up for the second round of pouring. And now this cut was the most pivotal cut on the whole table. It's got to be perpendicular to the sides. Ended up having to do this on the second pour to get it ready for where they're going to meet in the center. Now, since I needed these tables to meet perfectly level and flat, I took it to my friends um, over at Tech Pro to level it all with their CNC. Um, this was an amazing process. It took a long time to get it done right, but we ended up flattening both panels and getting them back on my truck to bring it back to my studio to sand away and finish it up. Now, after I got it together, I realized this was such a large table that I didn't want to take um, too long. So I ended up coming up with using two sanders at a time. And this might end up being uh, my preferred method of sanding tables. Um, although it would have been easier if the two sanders were the same sanders, so that it would have been easier to control. And I make the opposite side of that center cut that's absolutely pivotal for the table. And I am marking for the zip bolt connectors that I'll add to the description of this video. But this was crazy nervous, cutting those holes in the bottom of the table. Every time I cut holes like that, I get worried about cutting through it. Um, but then I cut the channels for the zip bolt connectors. There's me installing them on the bottom of the table. What these do is they go underneath the table, they're hidden, and they snug that table together. Uh, and then I go through and I shape the rest of the table, the full 14 foot length on this table, getting that perfect. I use the Festool track connectors here to get a full 14 foot long track to cut the width on the table. And I'm knocking out the last bit of the remaining gaps on the table. I filled it again with epoxy. This ended up being my 
third of three of four different epoxy fills on this table. And now some last final sanding on the table to get the seams perfect, getting rid of those epoxy fills. It never seems like the sanding ends. Water popping the table here. This is exciting because I get to check the sanding, see how quality it is. And now gonna mix up the two parts of that reveal. Gonna get that on the table. I use a trowel to kind of spread it nice and smoothly, then buff it off the table with some rags. Um, wipe it off as clean as possible so it doesn't get tacky. And there it is, finally ready for the delivery. Now this was absolutely cool over at Morrison Construction, the company that ended up buying this table from me. Um, their culture over there was amazing. They ended up having like six or seven folks just come on out uh, to help carry it up the stairs. And here is one more guy that comes out of his office to help with the process too. He gets his hands on the table as well to get it laid flat when he realizes this heavy thing is coming up their brand new conference room. We got it in two parts. They made the base for this table absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Showing it off here in all its beauty and glory. The finish ended up being perfect. The seam was nice and tight um, on that perfectly sized steel base that Morrison Construction made for their own table. Really proud of this piece. Really proud of the coloring, the overall finish on it. All the inclusions that got the epoxy. And folks, while we go look at the final view of this table, make sure to subscribe to get more videos just like this.